Hello. Now, as our month-long winter tour of Scotland draws to a close in our Sun Living V60 SP, I thought I'd make a video and share with you some of the things I wish I'd known before I set off, and also share with you some of the accessories that have made life so much easier. So if you're thinking of getting a camper van or setting off on a trip like this, you can learn from my mistakes. First of all, the things I wish I'd known and specified on the van. Now, I think it's no secret to anyone who's been following this trip that I really wish we had had a second battery fitted. So the Sun Living van came with the option of a second battery and the wiring. Didn't take up that option. That was a huge mistake. If you're planning on spending any nights off the grid, even one night off the grid, you really do need that second battery because of the consumption of the compressor fridge, the fan heater, and so on. Also, if you are thinking of going off grid more in the summertime, then definitely get a solar panel because that will keep your battery topped up. Another thing I've discovered using this van over the winter not that we've done a lot of off-grid touring, but when we have, we've got through a lot of LPG keeping the van warm. We've used about half of a six kilo propane cylinder. That has cost us between 10 and 12 pounds a night, depending on the cost of the cylinder exchange, which has been between 22 and 24 pounds per cylinder. Now, if we had invested in a refillable system like Gaslow Refillable, then to fill one of those cylinders would not have cost between 22 and 25 pounds. It would have cost between seven and eight pounds. Now, if you're going to use the van over a number of years and use it off grid for a number of years, the money that it will cost you to install something like the Gaslow Refillable system you will get back many times over. I've got that with my own caravan. I've saved hundreds and hundreds of pounds with the Gaslow refillable system. So as long as you've got access to LPG pumps and you're going to be doing some serious off-grid touring, then I would seriously recommend a refillable gas system, either a fixed tank or maybe even something like the Gaslow refillable or something like Safe Fill. It will be much cheaper as long as you can find somewhere to fill it up. And then staying with gas, another thing that would have been really useful would have been an automatic gas cylinder changeover valve. There isn't one fitted to this van and when you need to change the gas cylinders you have to have both those back doors open there's no light in the gas compartment and it's always at dark at night when you need to change them over had we had some kind of a changeover system an automatic changeover system we would have avoided all that it just means keeping an eye on when it's switched over so you know to replace the empty cylinder so again if you're going to use a lot of gas i would seriously think about getting an automatic changeover system to prevent having to have those doors wide open and to prevent the gas running out in the middle of the night if you're running the heating all night so they're the things that i wish i'd done or I'd known before we came on the trip. Now let's go through some of the accessories that I've brought with me. Some of you have been asking me questions about and have made life so much easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to all these accessories in the description below. Yes, they will be affiliated links so that if you do buy through those links, I will get a small commission for the Dougal Biscuit Fund, but there's no pressure at all to buy through those links so I will be linking everything in the description below but these are the things that have made this trip so much easier. We're going to start with this one. It's the Humble Fan Heater. Now in the UK when you have a pitch with an electric hookup it's very very rarely meters. You normally just have 10 amps or 16 amps and that's it. So all the sites we've used have had 16 amp supplies and the electric heating in this van has been 1800 watts. When the temperature got down to below freezing that struggled and rather than use the gas I used the fan heater to top it up because we still had lots of ampage to, to spare that we could use uh, 500 watts or even one kilowatt on the fan heater and it just saved burning gas. Also another great reason to have a fan heater is just in case of failure of the built-in heating system in your van. If the boiler fails and you can't even power it on gas, you've got a problem. You can't heat the van using the gas rings because that 
brings with it a huge risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. Similarly, I have a bioethanol stove for emergencies, which it could take the chill off, but again, you'd never leave it running with the windows closed, especially never leave it running at night because of the carbon monoxide risk. So if your heating failed, at least you could go to a site with an electric hookup, plug in your fan heater and you won't get cold. The next thing that's always a great help is, is a reel for my electric cable, especially with a camper van, you're always on the move. And I just find the reel to wind the cable in and reel the cable out makes setting up and packing down so much quicker, so much easier than trying to battle with a lead that you're wrapping around your arms and gets tangled up. A cable reel will make your life so much easier. Staying with the electric hookup, great thing about a camper van is you can quite often go and stay with friends, especially if they've got a drive and many of them will offer to plug you in overnight. You'll need one of these, something that's got the, the domestic 13 amp plug on one end and then the 16 amp socket on the other. So you can plug in your electric cable from your camper van to your friend's domestic 13 amp supply. If they got, for example, a plug in their garage or something like that. So that is worth having. And by the way, a huge thank you to one of my subscribers, Willie, for bringing me this because I forgot mine. And staying with electricity, another great thing to bring. It's not rocket science, it's just a trailing socket, one of these things with four sockets and about a meter of cable. Because here in this van, there's only one socket near the table and by the time you've got your laptop and you're charging some camera batteries and maybe charging your drone batteries and charging this, that and the other, it's really worthwhile bringing a trailing socket that don't take up hardly any space or weight and yet they are so super useful and really cheap. Right, another thing I find really useful is just one of these little USB to 12 volt cigarette chargers. So again, in this Sun Living, we have two 12 volt sockets, but the only USB socket is here in the cab, which is only powered when the engine's running. So one of these is great. This one is actually a twin USB. You can plug your phone charger cable and things like that into this. That is super useful. And again, really quite cheap. A head torch is a great investment, obviously like when you're changing the gas cylinders, that is a really good thing, a head torch. And what's been useful too with the issues we've had is a battery conditioner. I've got a Milenko battery conditioner that at least you can charge up the battery away from the van and check that the battery has not been damaged if it's got too low. So that is really useful. Another great thing are the behind me here these thermal screens that you put in the window again i've got mine from milenko and these are the ones that go inside the van you can also get ones that go outside the van i just figured that i wanted thermal screens that went inside the van they just attached by little suckers they're universal they fit most brands of van they really work as far as the insulation goes both have got their advantages and disadvantages with these internal ones you do get some condensation sometimes on the inside of the window which you might have to wipe off or put the demister on before you set off to to clear the windscreen the ones on the outside of course you've got to go outside to put them on and you could get really wet and then you've got all these soggy screens hanging around in the in the wet room when you're traveling around so it's swings and roundabouts i've just preferred the internal screens as i say these are from elenco and they are really good. Another great thing are these, these plastic crates. You all know the kind of thing. Handy for when you're bringing stuff in and out of the van, when you're packing it ready to go away. And also when you're on site, I use this to take my washing up to the washing up area because while there is a small sink in the van, obviously if you're on a site, it's far easier to use the site's washing up facilities. So I put all my washing up in one of those plastic crates. And on a similar note, the blue Ikea bags, those huge, big blue Ikea bags for when you're packing and unpacking the van. And then when you're in the van, they just roll up and fold down really small. And you can just put them at the back of a cupboard until you're ready to use them again. Grip mats, I, I would never go anywhere without my Milenko grip mats. I've now got these new ones. That's why they're still in the wrapper and I didn't need them on this trip but that was more by luck than judgment. With all the snow and they work on mud, I've vouched for these. 
I've used the old design many times in the snow and in the mud, but this new design are apparently a lot better. We've not actually needed them on this trip, but I certainly would not go anywhere without them because once you've been stuck in the mud once, you never want to get stuck in the mud again. Now then finally, as far as the cooking goes, I've had a lot of questions about the cooking. One thing I'd never be without is my steamer, which means I can boil potatoes in the bottom and steam veg on the top. That is really useful when you've only got a two burner hob. Probably the thing I'm being asked about the most on this trip is this, which is my little toaster. So I'll put a link in the description below where you can buy one of these. They're super cheap and you obviously toast bread, crumpets, and it's just really useful. And then finally, I can thank California Camping and the Adventures of Sarah and James for introducing me to the Ridge Monkey. This is the Ridge Monkey XL. Get the XL because if that's XL, I don't know what the regular size is because that's small enough. Great for doing sort of chops and schnitzels and anything like that in vegetables. It's kind of, it turns your low heat into like a skillet, like an oven. It's been super useful on this trip. So I've really enjoyed using my Ridge Monkey. So there you have it. They are the things I wish I'd known before we set off and some of the accessories that have made our life so much easier. Some of them are quite surprising. They're not really anything to do with motor caravanning, for example, the trailing socket, but it's been a lifesaver. So I hope you found that useful. As I said, links to all those products in the description below. And as ever, it just leads me to say from me and from Dougal, who's here on the seat, totally unimpressed. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>